back. So before we continue, let's talk a bit about status codes and why they're valuable. So whenever somebody sends a request to your REST API, it's kind of nice that you get a response back that actually is informative about what happened on the back end. And for that reason, status codes were invented, right? So you can actually send different status codes depending on what happened and, and how you can inform your user what went well or wrong inside your setup. And right here I found a list of some of the status codes that makes a lot of sense. So let's just take some of the categories. Um, you have some informal status codes, uh, just giving you some information. You have success status codes, that's what we're using right now, a 200 for OK, right? You have uh, redirection status codes, where it can explain that we are going somewhere else. You have client errors that can just explain that, for instance, in Postman, we might do something wrong, send a wrong set of information to the user and we can be informed. We have um, server information, if something goes wrong on the back end, so maybe our server crashes for some reason, maybe a request, uh, maybe a request actually ends up uh, destroying some data, I don't know, something goes horribly wrong on the back end, this is a bad thing for an owner of a back end, he has to take care of this as fast as possible if you get back a 500. But these status codes can easily um, explain to you as the owner if the client did something wrong or if the server did something wrong or if everything went well, right? So there's a lot of great information you can, you can provide right here with your REST API if you start using these guys. So how do we use them in our code? Well, let's jump into our code right here and um, instead of actually returning a, a simple customer, we're going to start using something called action results. It's already predefined in your solutions. We're already using it right here. We just haven't actually used it for something valuable yet. Because as default, when you don't put anything in here, you'll always get a status code OK back. What we'll do is we'll add now, we'll wrap this customer inside an action result because now we can actually start um, defining, um, not accepted, action result. We can actually start defining exactly a specific status code that we want to return to our users. Now let's just start out with actually just doing um, a new status code down here. What I want to do is I want to say if you for some reason when you send over the customer, you don't add a first name. I want to inform you that that's not a good thing. I want to inform you that you did something wrong. You made a bad request to me. So let's just try and, um, and say string here just to test that if the first name is null or empty, right? Then I want to kind of actually return bad request. So how do I know there's a bad request available? Well, I know there's a lot of predefined requests responses available that you can use the different status codes and I found a small list right here you can go and check that out some of the most used one okay created no content bad request unauthorized forbid and not found and also one called status codes so let's just try and use some of them and you can then go and google if you want to find more different status codes out there that you want to use but how do we use it let's try and jump into the code again what I'll do is I'll say if you do not send a first name to me, I might as well just tell you that you did something wrong and I might be very specific by saying first name is required for sending, requ required for creating customer, right? So I'm, I'm very informative right here and it's very easy for me as a client to then figure out, okay, maybe it's because I didn't add that first name in my list. But let's see if it works. Let's just try and rerun this. So the expectation now is that if you send in a customer to my post, request right here, you'll get a bad request back, a 400 bad request if you actually don't pass in the first name. And if you do pass in the first name, you'll get a 200 status code, meaning that everything went well. Jumping into Postman, let's just try and remove first name right here, Boomi, let's try and do a send, and you'll notice I'm getting back a bad request now. And actually a very informative uh, method right here as well. Let's try and do something different again, let's try instead of putting in the first name of John again, and let's do a send, and now I get back a 200 OK, and it created John. What if I put in first Nama instead of first name, so there's an A in here instead, let's try and do a send, bad request, first name required, and again, I can look at my code now and say, what, I put in a first, oh, oh, I put in an A instead of an E, let's just convert that, change that back, let's just put in John 2. Notice how simple it is for me if I get some information back from your REST API to make changes without having to call you and say, something is wrong, man. I can actually figure this out myself. Now, there's also a lot of other types of requests, of course. Uh, the bad request, that's kind of for protecting me from client errors. But there's also, what if um, something went wrong on the back end? I could say, 
a 500 request. I'm just going to do it now just to show you how easy it is. I could actually go in here and just say, let's just have a look again at, at the actual set right here. Bad request, unauthorized, forbidden. They actually don't have a 500 request right here. So let me just try and create one. So I'll just say return. Um, there's one called status code and I'll just do a 500 right here. And then I can actually pass in a string. Um, horrible error. Oh, horrible, two R's. Call tech support, right? Something went horribly wrong right here. Now I know this is of course not something you would do, but maybe that would be something breaking on your back end. And you actually get this error back if something goes wrong in your code. If you get an exception, people would get this status code back. So let's just try and rerun this. Now if I actually put in a user now, maybe my database is not running, maybe my, uh, my service is doing something wrong. But for some reason I need to be uh, informed that something went horribly wrong, internal server error, boop, 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 calling tech support. I need to figure this out. But this is the way that you guys can now start actually returning useful information through status codes to a client. So you can dive into this yourself. We're going to start making some examples where we kind of prepare ourselves for horrible information from the client. Um, and also we can start actually adding forbidden uh, when we start having security. So see you the next time. Have fun.